Ma'am, go ahead. What? Okay. Thank you. Ma'am, go ahead and tell me your name, please. Ms. Slaughter. Okay, Ms. Slaughter, you're here on two cases. Um, you do qualify for the services of the public defender. Would you like the public defender to represent you, Ms. Slaughter? Yes. You'll need to answer out loud and clearly. Okay, I'll go ahead and appoint the services of the public defender in this manner. Ms. Slaughter, you're here in case number 2017-CF465-AO as well as 2017-CF466-AO. In the first case, you're here for accessory after the fact to a uh, capital offense. And in the second case that I mentioned, it's giving false name to law enforcement. Um, State, I see that she has a prior failure to appear and um, a minimal history battery for... Um, for misdemeanor battery, is that correct? That is what I've been able to ascertain based on the information I have in front of me, yes. So what's your position on bond on, on um, let's go ahead and discuss the more serious one, the accessory after the fact. What's your position on that? Well, Judge, the court indicated that she was charged with accessory after the fact to a capital crime. I'm showing on this arrest affidavit that she was charged with accessory after the fact to a life or a first degree felony. Um, this is an F1. Having reviewed it the way it was punched in at 77.0311. Under 1C, it falls, and um, under 2A, respectively, it falls under F1. But what's your position on bond? Um, our position is that if she is entitled to a bond, based on the fact that um, several issues. First, first, looking at threat to the community. Um, it appears, based on these facts, that approximately an hour and a half after Master Sergeant um, Clayton was murdered. Miss Slaughter's vehicle drove to the Walmart and circled the area where Mark Keith Lloyd escaped. Immediately after the murder of Sar Deputy S Master Sergeant Clayton. I do find that there is PC. Yes, ma'am. I'm just okay. stating these facts for the record to go toward the totality of the cir circumstances of why I'm asking for the bond I'm asking for. So based on that and the fact that you know she was seen to a, or her her phone number continuously called. Um, a number that's associated with an, another one of the, the uh, persons that was alleged to have aided and abetted him. Um, we, and, and the fact that she indicates that she's been in constant contact with him since, since he was wanted in December for the murder of Sade Dixon. Um, the fact that he showed up at her sister's residence and the two of them had a face-to-face -face conversation about the fact that law enforcement would have to kill him before he went back to prison. Um, we suggest that um, she presents a threat to the community because, um, you know, if she, if and when she's able to post bond, um, the the best indicator of, of present behavior is past behavior, and it d definitely appears that, um, you know, she she did aid and abet him, um, and but for the fact that he was not apprehended after Shade Dixon's murder. He was out to be at that Walmart on January 9th to gun down Sergeant Clayton. Um, I would suggest that a bond of $500,000 would be appropriate in this case with absolutely no contact with um, any of the, co the, the not co-defendants, but any of the other persons, um, including um, Ms. Lakentia Smith-Lloyd or Mr. Zargi Mayan or anybody associated with either of those two individuals. Um, I, I, would, I would suggest that she is a risk of flight, she is a threat to the community, and she is a threat to the integrity of the judicial process. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Judge. And defense? Yes, Judge. Given that my client has very limited criminal history and she is indigent, uh, $500,000 would be um, unreasonable under the circumstances as there is not even a remote probability or possibility that she would be able to afford that bond. Um, I would also, Your Honor, um, just formably um, uh, get clarification on Your Honor's position regarding whether this is an F1 or an F2. Uh, I see that it was char put in a 7-7 O three one one, 
but I'm not sure looking under the statute um, that doesn't seem to look at one uh, C and two A. That's why I put that on the record. I see, because uh, I'm I'm looking at two uh, B, which is which relates to life felonies and first degree, uh, which is what it was charged with in the wait, affidavit. Wait. So, are you alleged? Is it your position that the crime that Mr. Lloyd committed is not a capital offense? Judge, I'm just alleging that uh, based on the affidavit and what was charged here, that it is uh, that. She's been, that she was arrested for accessory after the fact to life or first degree. Uh, it, so just to make sure I'm uh, understanding correctly, uh, your honor has uh, found that there's probable cause for her to be arrested um, under- uh, Capital felony, yes. assisting a capital. Okay, yes, I have. So what's your position on um, bond? My uh, position is that since uh, my client is indigent, has a limited criminal history, a five hundred thousand dollar would be bond would be unreasonable. I'm going to ask this court to put bond at uh, one thousand dollars. Based on the facts of the case and the continuous communications um, with unknown numbers and her appearance at the scene of a, a, a fatal shooting that Mr. Lloyd was involved in, I think five hundred thousand dollars is absolutely appropriate. Moreover. Um, any cell phones that you use, whether it's a phone, cell phone that you have um, on your own or in your name or something that you happen to pick up as a disposable cell phone or considered a throwaway phone, uh, you need to register any new cell phone numbers, any email names, any electronic um, identifications with law enforcement upon your release. I agree with the state that you are to have no contact with Mr. Lloyd. You are to have no, no contact with... Um, Two other people who are named within the report, Lakeisha Smith Lloyd as well as Zargi Mahan. And then let's go ahead and talk about the other case, um, 466, giving false name to law enforcement. Um, when you were apprehended, you gave the name of your sister. I'm going to go ahead and increase bond on that to $5,000. And these are set in front of Division 22 and Division 17, respectively. Thank you. Okay, next case. Good morning, ma'am. Go ahead and tell me your name. Ms. Lloyd. I'm sorry? Lakeisha Smith Lloyd. Okay, thank you. And appearance from counsel, please. Yes, Your Honor. Good morning. Carrie Rance on behalf of Ms. Smith Lloyd. Uh, I have reviewed um, the case management system. I don't see that a notice of appearance has been filed. Yes, ma'am. I have one um, here. I could either hand it to the clerk or go electronically ahead. file it this afternoon. You can go ahead and hand file it right now. Ms. Smith Lloyd, you're here on Orange County case number 2017 CF 452, accessory after the fact to a uh, life or first degree felony. Um, I know your counsel was present, but um, I'll hear for my la for the last case. Um, State, what's your position on bond on this case? Judge, if the court is finding probable cause for this as accessory after the fact to a capital felony, my position is that she's not entitled to a bond. If this court is finding probable cause for this as accessory to the fact, after the fact to a life or a first degree felony, my position with regard to bond is that um, based on these facts, which are, I would argue, more egregious than the previous facts, because what we have here is confirmation that Ms. Smith Lloyd actually went to the Texas Fried Chicken restaurant to pick up money for Mark Heath Lloyd. Uh, Mr. Zagi Mann confirmed that he took $200 from the cash register and, and gave it to, it says Markeith Lloyd, but it says Lakentia Lloyd came into the Texas Fried Chicken res restaurant to pick up money for Markeith Lloyd. Um, so based on the fact that she took a more active role um, in, the, um, in that, and also the fact that she had initially indicated to officers that she knew where he was, 
and would cooperate. And then um, after inquiring about whether or not a weapon was recovered, stopped cooperating and did not come forth with that knowledge. I mean, these are, there's, there's reasonable, I think it's reasonable to, to, to assert that as she stands here today, she knows where he is and has not furnished that information. Um, based on all of that, as well as the, the arguments that I previously made regarding threat to the community, the fact that you know, if, if he had been apprehended um, after the murder of Sade Dixon, he would not have been out on January 9th to shoot Deputy, uh, Deputy Sergeant um, Deb Durgens and um, Officer, um, excuse me, uh, Officer Lewis would not have had to set up the cordon which ended up costing him his life. Um, based on the fact that, based on the charges in and of themselves, I believe she's a risk of flight. And based on the, the, the again, the high probability, I believe that if she is to get out, she may continue to assist Mr. Lloyd in um, evading um, law enforcement. I would ask that this court set this bond at a million dollars. Same conditions as the court set for uh, Ms. Slaughter. Defense. Yes, Your Honor. Um, it's our position that Ms. Smith Lloyd is charged with um, a second degree felony. If you look at, I know that previous arguments have been made, but in the offense she is uh, uh, charged with accessory after the fact to um, a life and first degree felony. Per the statute under subsection B, that would be a second degree felony. If you um, review the police report, you will see in there there's no mention of any timeline, any dates. Um, the only indication is um, an interview that took place on January 12th with uh, Mr. Mahan, but it does not indicate any dates, times, or circumstances to which the incident regarding the $200 transfer took place. So at this point, the court cannot determine if it took place yesterday, two weeks ago, last month. But by reading the police report, um, there's no indication that it happened after um, the sergeant with the Orlando Police Department was killed. So it's our position that this is a second degree felony, which means um, she is entitled to a bond. And even with that said, if the court finds that this is a first degree felony, she's still entitled to a bond. Um, the state has asked for a $1 million bond. Uh, that, that amount is excessive. Um, Ms. Smith Lloyd has lived in Central Florida her entire life. She has her family um, present in um, the gallery with members of the community, including her pastor. She has three young children here. She's not a flight risk. She has no prior convictions. She's currently caring for her grandmother and her great-grandmother. Um, she will be present at any court appearance that the court requires of her, and we would ask for a bond in the amount of five thousand dollars. Corrections, I'm, I'm going to give you. I'm going to ask a couple of questions of you. She has no history, no failures to appear. Correct, Your Honor. Um, Judge, she does have arrest history. Okay, here in Orange County. Yes. It's um, a case from 2010 for uttering a fraud, uttering a false bank bill or note. Um, it, appear, it appears that case was dropped. Okay. Um, corrections, were you, able, were you able to, does she work? Uh, what, Let what, me see, Your Honor. I don't think we did a full interview on um, Ms. Let me see. Yeah, they weren't able to verify any community ties and with the defendant's contacts, Your Honor. So nothing was verified. She was interviewed and screened by pretrial. Your Honor, if I may be heard, I, her, both her mother and her father are present in the gallery. All right. Well, you know, you can go ahead and um, try to modify any bond with the division. It's going to be assigned to Division 20, it looks like. Um, I am going to set bond amount, and I will give you um, some release conditions. Um, I'm going to set bond in the amount of $750,000. Um, I'm really concerned about the nature of this crime. I do find that there's probable cause. The affidavit was written in a chronological order. Um, and she did have contact with law enforcement and then backed off on that and then collected the money for, for on behalf of um, the accused Mr. Lloyd. 
I'm going to order no contact with Mr. Markeith Lloyd, no contact with Zargi Mahan, and no contact with, um, I just don't want to mispronounce her name. Give me a moment. Thank you. No contact with Jania Slaughter. Additionally, um, Any electronic devices, which includes cell phones, iPads, computers, any electronic names, any phone numbers that you use, they need to be recorded and given to preach. Um, they need to be recorded, provided upon your um, ability. If you do bond out, all right. Thank you, Council.